Hey guys, it's me Anne, and this is Beauty With Me. Guys, I'm wearing high-end makeup on one side of my face and drugstore makeup on the other. Pause right now and tell me if you can tell which side is which. As you can probably tell, I am doing a tutorial today and it's high-end makeup versus drugstore makeup, but with the added bonus of every single thing being cruelty-free. So without further ado, we're just gonna get into this makeup look. Once we get started, let me know in the comments below if you were right. And if you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down below so that we can hang out every single week. All right, let's go. Did you get it right? I'm gonna put high-end makeup on the right side of my face and drugstore makeup on the left side of my face, starting with foundation. Foundation. Now I have this fella. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. It feels like moisturizer going on. It has a lovely natural finish, but it has also an SPF of 15. I'm gonna be applying it with this little beauty blender bubble, the light pink one. Also a cruelty-free product. So this foundation is definitely not inexpensive. It's $44, which is Pretty typical in terms of foundation price points for kind of higher end makeup. But if you're looking for something that has really natural looking coverage and kind of feels like a hybrid between a foundation and a tinted moisturizer, I definitely would recommend this. So now that the right side of my face is perfected, I'm gonna move on to the left side, which is the drugstore side. I'm gonna be using this foundation. It is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. It has an interesting applicator. Look at this fella. I'm gonna put it on my face directly from the spatula and I'm going to blend it in with this Real Techniques Complexion Sponge. This fella is $5.99, ridiculously affordable for a foundation like this. It applies so beautifully. Like I'm looking at my skin right now and I'm like, it looks like I'm not even wearing makeup on either side, honestly. Moving right along to concealer. Now this is the Wander Beauty concealer. There is an illuminating side, which is a liquid. And then there's a matte side that's a stick. I'm going to dot this illuminating side under my eyes. This has more coverage than I thought I was gonna have. I'm going to use the matte side to conceal some of my blemishes. I really like this concealer. I like that it has two sides. It's, only, it's 29 bucks, but for two pretty sizable products, I think it's a good deal. Like, look at this one. Pretty good. Next up, I've got another Wet n Wild product. This is the Wet n Wild Concealer Corrector. So I am mixing the shades Light Ivory, and light medium beige. One of these fellas will run you $3.99, which is very affordable. I'm gonna use this all over my face, under my eyes, around my nose where I get the redness and onto the scarring situation that I have on my cheek. I'm gonna stop there. So I think that my base is pretty much set. Overall, I think my skin looks really good. The next step is powder. I'm using this one from Cover FX. It's called the Perfect Setting Powder. This one has a little sifter thing that keeps the product from getting all over the place, which is genius. So this one is $35. When it comes to powder, I'm not very picky, I'll be honest. So I'll kind of use anything. Looks nice. Moving right along to drugstore powder. I have this one from Flower and it's so pretty. It's huge, like it's definitely not travel friendly. It comes with this really cute little flower puff. Should I use the puff? I'll use the puff a little bit. And then I'm gonna use this uh, Real Techniques contour brush as well. This fella retails for 13 bucks, which is on the pricier end for drugstore, but I think that because it's, this is the only drugstore brand that I think has a powder like this. It's nice to know that you can get a very luxurious, like, you know, true kind of like a vintage inspired powder tin. So that is powder done. On to bronzer. Now I love putting on bronzer and this bronzer from Marc Jacobs, it's called the O exclamation point mega bronze is so beautiful. The packaging is stupidly big. I mean, it's like ridiculously big. Like, look at this. It's like as big as my face. I'm going to use this Sigma Large Angled Contour Brush. 
Now this is an expensive bronzer. It's $49, but I will say it is really lovely. It blends beautifully. The color is kind of the perfect matte bronzer color. It's a little bit chocolatey, not too warm, not too cool. You can kind of use it for both functions. You can use it to contour if you want. You can use it to slightly warm up your complexion. So I'm gonna stop there because I very easily go overboard with the bronzer. I'm gonna move on to the drugstore side, which is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in Deep Bronze. I love the texture of this stuff. So I'm gonna dip my contour brush into this product. So I'm going in with even more product because it is a lot lighter and sheerer than the Marc Jacobs side, so I want it to match. But I will say, that it blends so nicely. 15 bucks for a drugstore bronzer though, that's kind of a lot. Assessment. I'm a fan. They're very different, so it really depends on what you want. If you want like bronze in one stroke, quick, fast, opaque, Marc Jacobs. If you want to be able to build your color, position formula. Moving right along to blush. My high-end blush is this fella from Hourglass. It's the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Dim Infusion. I've used these blushes before, but I've never used this shade. It's a beautiful, marbled, baked, peachy, coral color. So I don't like to go too ham with blush. So I just usually will take my brush. I'm using the same, the Sigma Large Angle Contour, dabbing it in here, tapping off the excess. And then I like to sweep it just above where I put my bronzer and then onto the apple of my cheek. Looks good. Me likey. So drugstore side, I have this baked blush from Milani. It is the classic Luminoso. It also has a nice kind of radiant finish, but look at the pigment in this. Right off the bat, the Milani one is VVV pigmented. This blush retails for seven bucks. I think it's definitely worth the money. And it's a lovely color. It goes onto the skin beautifully. It's not catching on dry skin. It's not looking patchy. I'm gonna go in a little bit more. It looks the same. I like it. Highlighter time! And on the high-end side, I have RMS Beauty. It's called the Champagne Rosé Luminizer. It launched this year and it is so pretty. And it has the prettiest like pink micro shimmer running through it that when you turn your head, it hits the light in a really beautiful and flattering way. So I'm gonna use my ring finger. So I powdered my face already, as you saw. When I wear cream highlighter, I'll layer it on top of powder, and this one is layering on top of powder really well. This fella is 38 bucks, which is pricey for something so small, but because it's for highlighter and you're not gonna use it all over your face, I do think, I will say that this pot will last you so long. All right, so the drugstore side is this fella from e.l.f. It's called the Highlighting Pearl Paint. It shears out really nicely. It's definitely more on the frosty side than the RMS is, but it, like the RMS one, it has a little bit of warm shimmer going through it. So same deal on my ring finger. This one costs four bucks. Very affordable, look at this. Already, like I'm telling you right now, one layer of this is definitely more on the strobey side, but I don't dislike it, I actually really like it. It's layering on top of powder also really, really well. Honestly, both of them are really pretty, it's just your personal preference. Next up is the most expensive item on this side of my face, it's gonna be the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette, and it has all of these gorgeous yellows, golds, reds. So I'm gonna go with a very fall color palette with some yellow on the lid and a little bit of these rust shades in the crease. I think it's gonna look like, look like a leaf. So this is the Sigma E25. I'm gonna use it to pick up this matte pigment. Whoa, 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 that's a lot. And then I'm gonna go in with Horizon, this warm, rusty terracotta shade in my crease. Then I'm gonna take my fluffy blending brush. This is a Sigma tapered blending brush. It is the E40. Windshield wiper motions, blending the horizon of my sunset. And then I'm gonna use my shader brush to take some of the darker pigments a little bit under my eye. It looks weird without eyeliner and mascara, but it's gonna come together, guys. So now I have the next palette and it is from ColourPop. I think it's actually called the Yes Please palette, but it is cute AF. This palette 
has a very similar color tone to the Natasha. Let's do a little side by side. The ColourPop is lacking the very, very opaque stark white shade and doesn't have some, uh, it's not as glittery. The ColourPop one is 16 bucks and this one's 129. So I'm gonna go in same shades. I'm gonna use this Wet n Wild brush. It is the P15. I'm gonna go in with the Real Technique shading brush and use some of the deeper matte shades to uh, define my crease. Placing this in the out, my outer corner, this shade is a little bit more red than the shade that I used um, in the Natasha, but I think once it's all blended out, it won't look very different. So I'm gonna use this fluffy blending brush from Wet n Wild, it's the P20, and blend those colors. So I'm looking at both sides now, pigment, totally there on the ColourPop side. Blending was a little bit more difficult. Natasha side, pigment also was great. Blending was easy. I think that the ColourPop palette being $16 is such a good price for shadows of this quality. So I'm gonna move right along and do eyeliner. I've got one of my favorites, Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. It's a great liner, cruelty free. So I'm gonna use that to create a little cat eye on the high end side. That's the eyeliner done. I just really like this brush tip. It's just so good. So drugstore side, I'm using this eyeliner from Jordana. It's called the Fabu Liner Liquid Eyeliner in Black. It has more of a traditional felt tip and definitely is thicker than the Kat Von D, but it looks like it's still gonna give me a nice fine line. Despite the fact that it has a thicker tip, it's actually really, that drawing that thin line was really easy. And this thing is three bucks. That was really easy. I don't love felt tip liners, but that one, it applied really, really nicely. Impressed with both of them, honestly. All right, last piece of the eye makeup puzzle is mascara. And the high end side, I have this Ico Sport Waterproof Mascara. It has a really nice curved brush and it retails for $26. All right, so that is mascara on the high-end side, done. On the drugstore side on the left, I'm gonna use this one from Pacifica. It's called Aquarian Gaze. It's a water-resistant mascara. It's not waterproof, which I'm a little bit nervous about. Opening it up right away, I like the brush. This is a plastic brush, really dense bristles. So hopefully that hugs my lashes really well. So this mascara retails for 14 bucks, which is pretty pricey. So far, I like it. I'd be interested to see if these smudge and whether or not they will hold a curl because there are even some mascaras that are waterproof that I've tried that don't hold a curl. So we will check in there. Last but not least, I have lips. And on the high-end side, I'm gonna be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipstick in Dusty Rose. It retails for 20 bucks. All right, half the lip's done. That was really easy to apply. The color was very opaque. It feels comfortable so far though, we'll see. And on the drugstore side, I'm gonna be using this Milani Amore Matte Lip Cream in the shade Precious. This one retails for $9. Okay, so I think it's dried down now. I don't think that you can really tell the difference. They're both lovely. They feel good so far, but these are really matte, so I'm wondering how they're gonna wear like throughout the day. But that's the look done. I don't know, does this, is this lipstick look a little too much for the eye look? I don't know. We're gonna roll with it. It's time for Can You Tell? I'm with Julia. <laughs> Hello. Hey. All right, I'm wearing high-end makeup on one side of my face and drugstore makeup on the other side. Oh, this challenge. What do you think? Which one, which is which? I think this side. Why? Well, maybe it's because you did a better job blending the eye. I'm not sure, the but truth I just think comes out. I just think that it's like really nicely blended. You're wrong. This is the high end side. This is the drugstore side. This eyeshadow palette is like a hundred. Clearly, I know nothing. Hi, Lewis. How you doing? I have a question for you. Yeah. 
I'm wearing high-end makeup on half my face and drugstore makeup on the other half. Which okay. one do you think is which? I think the high-end makeup's on your left and my right. You're wrong! Uh, Why did you say that? I don't know, I think it looks better. Okay. Yeah. Wise words from Louis <laughs> over here. Hi guys, I'm back. It is 6 p.m. so I've been wearing this makeup for seven hours and I've gotta say, it's looking pretty good but I am looking oily. The foundation looks good on both sides. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference. Powder wise, Cover FX side might have made my skin just a, just a hair, a hair matter. Concealer looks good, no complaints. On the highlighter front, you can still see this. Here, I can still see it. The dewiness is still there, but it's dried out a bit as I've worn it. You can still see the nice, like, kind of pinkish tinge, but it's definitely not as strong as the e.l.f. side. Eye-wise, I'm getting a little bit more smudging on the left side of my face, so the, the drugstore side. I'm surprised that this Pacifica mascara did hold a curl. Eyeshadow-wise, I think they both look really good. Creasing just a little on the on the ColourPop side. Eyeliner, I mean Kat Von D slayed. She always does. This this liner isn't smudging, it's staying really crisp. The Jordana side also looks really crisp, but it is starting to smudge a little bit on the inner corner of my eye. Lipstick wise, I can tell that there's two different lipsticks on my on my lips. I think it's the one thing that I didn't match, didn't color match, but they actually both feel really good. All right, that's it guys. I just talked through a whole lot of product, but I hope that it showed you guys how to wear some new different makeup techniques, what products are good. It also sh hopefully showed you that you can get a luxury look without having to pay high-end prices. As always, please let me know what you thought in the comments and let me know which side you think held up better, the high-end side or the drugstore side. I'm very curious. If you're new to cruelty-free makeup or you just wanna know more about the concept, I will link some information in the description bar, but if you have any favorite cruelty-free brands, please let me know as well. Until then, I will see you guys next Monday. Bye. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you want me to do next in the comments below. And click here to subscribe to Refinery29 and click here to watch more videos. See you later.